Hey guys, Shanna Kramer here. Welcome to Creatively Uncorked. This is our live experience. Um, so if you are just joining us now, go ahead and invite your friends. Um, you do have to be a member of the group to get into these live events. And I know we've had a lot of people join today and I'm even getting questions from within the group. People are asking, what are these, um, what are these lives all about? Well, I'll tell you, I know a lot of you already know, that's why you're here. Um, but for everyone who is new, these live paintings are paintings that you can find on our calendar. They are scheduled just like regular events at creativelyuncorked.com. And you can, if you need an art kit for your painting, you can go ahead and purchase an art kit. New brushes, used brushes, no brushes, totally up to you. And then we'll give you the colors that you need to do this painting. Um, these we do on the regular scheduled time. Right now we're doing them Mondays and Thursdays. I have the next several Mondays scheduled. But Thursdays I still need to fill up. I have a plan. <laughs> I just haven't gotten them on the calendar yet. So Mondays and Thursdays we'll be doing these live paintings. And that is where I will have a painting on the calendar. And I'll walk you right through how to paint it. If you wanted to um, paint along with your own supplies, you're not required to buy an art kit. You can just join the group and then just paint along with us. And feel free to comment, ask questions. We're doing this live, so this is your painting. All right, so when you when you get on the group, go ahead and say hi. Say hi to your new friends. Let's uh, let everybody know who's watching. Okay, so like I said, I'm Shanna Kramer. This is Creatively Uncorked. The painting that we're going to be doing today, we got with our art kit. And we are going to have some blue, some white, some green, and some brown. If you have a plate handy, hi Jennifer. Hey Cody, how's it going? Jennifer, are you painting along today? You got a kit for this, right? Hi Jen. <laughs> it's good to see everybody here. We don't get to all get together in the studio anymore, so at least we can get together on Facebook, right? So this will be a fun one. So just a couple of little changes in the studio since the last time we talked on Thursday. Or no, Saturday, I guess. Hi, Courtney. Uh, so one of the things is we have since found out that we're not going to be able to have studio events all through April. So I'm in the process of um, taking all the studio events off of the April calendar. They're either getting postponed to July or August. You know, a safe date, <laughs> I hope. Uh, or they're just getting um, deleted if there aren't any signups. So... So if you're signed up for anything in April, just be aware that you're going to get rescheduled. Um, if you have a private party coming up in April, of course, that's also going to get postponed, either postponed or canceled. That's going to be your call if it's your party. Um, yeah, so, you know, some changes. We do what we can in this day and age, right? All right. And how are you? Okay, so brief little history on Creatively Uncorked. Creatively Uncorked popped its cork January 2014. You've all heard this spiel if you've been in the studio. Um, we started out a little over six years ago, almost six and a half years ago now. And we've had multiple studios. We now have the West Fargo studio and we're doing lives. <laughs> One day we'll be able to take the party to you or we'll be able to invite you back into our studio again. Won't that be exciting? In the meantime, uh, we'll be doing these lives. We are also doing pre-recorded paintings. So some of these art kits, when you order from the art kits to go on creativelyuncorked.com, you can order your art kit and a painting. And some of them now are having uh, video instructions, recorded video instructions. So we're working on that for most of them. And if you have video instructions for the art kit that you order, there's going to be a link in your written instructions. Something like this. And I'll tell you where to find it. So in the Facebook group in this case. So yeah, that's kind of what we're changing to these days. All right, who's ready to get started? Me too. So a few more rules. Rule number one, two rules, only two. <laughs> Rule number one, no negativity. Rule number two, have fun. Fun art, not fine art. And if you did not get a kit, if you did get a kit from us, you probably have a pre-sketched canvas. Just ignore that. We're going to paint over the whole thing anyway. And if you did not get a kit from us and you're starting out with a blank canvas, I will show you how to, uh, how to 
how to draw that. There we go. I'll just get all of my paint colors opened up. We're going to be doing a lot of blending today. I know a lot of the past paintings I've just been dipping my brush right in the paint um, paint bucket, paint buckets <laughs> and using them straight out of the out of the paint but I am going to have to dump these out onto my plate today just to make sure that I have all my paints mixed up as I need them to. So some things that you'll have as your supplies you'll have two or three brushes um, you'll have a small brush maybe, you'll have a filbert brush maybe, and you'll have a bigger brush. So these are the recommended brushes. If you have something similar to this, you're going to be good to go. And as far as colors, really, it doesn't matter that much what colors you're using. A blue, a brown, a white, and then some shade of green. Phthalo green, I've discovered, doesn't work that well because it turns minty. And unless you want minty flowers, I mean, that's okay if you do. If you do, use phthalo green. <laughs> if you want green green, uh, use something else. Hey, Courtney, ready to get started. Okay, I'll show you how to sketch your vase. So the vase you can see comes right about halfway down the canvas. So that's a nice and easy, about halfway down. So whatever size canvas you're working on, halfway down is where your vase is. That vase is less than half the width of the canvas. You know, to get technical, or just draw your lines wherever you want them. We're just going to make a little bit of a vase. And again, these are not set in stone. <laughs> Aw, the brush pledge. <laughs> oh, Jen, that's great. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so these are your brushes, not our brushes, right? These are yours, so you can take care of them any way that you see fit. I do recommend that you keep your brushes in your water when you're done using them. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> we could do the brush pledge if you wanted to repeat after me hold your brushes up hand over your heart I will not let paint dry on my brushes <laughs> I will put my brushes in water when I'm done using them and I'm going to make the best flowers anyone's ever seen <laughs> there you go swore to it please stick to it and at the end, since we're not doing a group photo, if you guys want to post photos of yourself and your paintings on our Facebook group at the end, that would be great. I'd love to see it. So, big brush. Whether it's a big bristle brush or the big flat brush, whichever big brush you've got, go ahead and swish that around in the water a little bit. And we'll be using a little bit of brown. And like I said, I'm just going to scoop these out right onto my plate. I'm pretty sure I'll be using most all of this paint, so I'll just scoop it all out. Okay, a little bit of brown. Whole lot of white. And yeah, I'm mixing these colors a little. They're getting a little dirty. It's fine. They're all going to be mixed by the time we're done. This painting is all about color mixing. And I don't need the green quite yet. Brown and blue and white, that's good enough for now. Yeah, that blue, that's a phthalo blue. That's very pretty. That's my favorite blue. Cody's favorite blue too, right, Cody? So now I've got a good dirty brush. Browns and blues. And then I'll just pick up a big chunk of white. When I say big chunk of white, I'm not kidding. That's kind of a messy brush, huh? Well, so be it. All right, so now I'm doing vertical strokes along my background. So your background now is going to be a variety of colors, <laughs> whatever colors you had on your brush. And that's great. This is a nice colorful painting with a lot of variety, good variety of brush strokes, good texture. So aside from the colors, which we know our colors are all going to look great together, so that's not a problem. Then the only thing that you really need to worry about here is the lights and darks. Pretty simple, right? So you can see I am painting around the vase, not through it. I'm not really worried about that top edge because it's going to be covered with flowers. You won't see it anyway. And just going ahead and covering that whole canvas, except for the vase. <laughs> Now 
All right, so now if you are also painting your edges, you can paint right around the edge of your canvas. So just like you're wrapping your painting around the edge, just kind of wrap that same color right around the edges. And you can do that now, you can do that later, doesn't matter. All right, so now I've got a pretty good glob of paint on my brush. So I'm just going to wipe that off on my towel. Then rinse the brush in the water. And if you're still painting your background, go right on ahead and keep painting your background. I'm just going to get the brush good and rinsed out. And mostly dried off again. When you're drying off your brush, you mostly want to make sure you dry off the handle. So if you have any drips on your handle, that's the part that'll usually drip into your paint. And that's where you get kind of some spots in your background once in a while. So we'll just kind of avoid that just by drying it off. Just dry it off a little bit. All right, so our background is done. And then we can move on to the vase. The vase has kind of three parts. So we've got the whole vase shape itself. We've got the highlight, and then we've got the shadow. And that's about it. So we'll start out with a vase color, medium vase color, which is kind of a medium blue. So just a tiny little touch of white adding to that blue. And any brush you have will work. I like to use the biggest brush that I can use for any part of the painting. So there's my base color, my local color, which is just plain blue. And when I'm ready to add a highlight, just take that same brush, just dunk in a little bit of white paint. And since my highlight is coming up from the bottom, I'll start at the bottom of the canvas and go up. And if that isn't bright enough, I'll wait a little bit until it dries. Um, if your paint is too wet, it won't. new paint won't stick to it. If it starts to dry, new paint will stick to it. So I'll just let it go a little bit, but I will add my shadow. So now I'm just wiping off all that excess paint onto the, onto the towel. No need to rinse it. And just picking up some brown. Okay, so cat hair. <laughs> Yep, my cat's been here. <laughs> All right, so now I've got mostly brown, a little touch of blue, and right up to that top right of that vase and just pull down from the top, and this will be our dark shadow area. Yeah, that's something that doesn't happen in the studio. Don't have cat hair in my paint at the studio. Home studio though, you betcha. She likes to make her mark and let everybody know where she is. <laughs> and she has super, super really long hair. Okay, so I have my entire background now painted. If you're also painting your edges and if you wanna paint the bottom underneath your vase blue as well, you can do that. So if you wanna paint your edges, you can do that. But once you have your top of your background done, leave it alone, let it dry. We want this to be pretty dry before we go on to the next step. So now would be the time that you could take a break, go to the bathroom, get something to drink. Cheers. <laughs> and I'm trying to make sure that everyone who is trying to get into this painting gets added to their group in time. Okay, it looks like we're doing pretty well. Don't forget to leave comments, ask questions. All right. So while we're waiting for our background to dry, just a couple of things I wanted to tell you, new things that are going on at the studio. I already told you that we have our, you know, we're gonna, we're not having any in-studio events all through April. So we're transferring everything to not even transferring it to May. <laughs> We're transferring it later than May. Um, a lot of the events that I've rescheduled, I'm rescheduling for like July, August, pretty far out there. 
just to make sure that they're going to be safe and not have to get rescheduled again. So and our other upcoming live events that we have coming up this Thursday will be blowing in the wind. That'll be a fun one. We'll use a fan brush for that. So if you're ordering your kits, you're going to get a fan brush that's practically new. Um, if you order new brushes with this, you're probably still, you'll get new brushes and probably still a used fan brush. But like I said, they're practically new. Uh, the Boho Feather is next Monday, one week from today. I know we have a lot of sign-ups for that one. That one's going to be fun. That's a nice, I mean, it's all metallic. It's just pretty. Boho Bull. We're having like <laughs> Boho Week next week, all week. Boho Feather, Boho Bull. Uh, that's going to be a fun one. That I really like that painting. There, we have some paintings that are fun to look at, and then we have some paintings that are just really fun to paint. And this one, well, it's fun to look at too, but this one is a really fun one to paint. So I'm looking forward to that. Cheshire Cat, that's two weeks from today. That's kind of a messy one. Three weeks from today, we've got the Rise and Shine Rooster, um, also going to be a good one. And then I've got a couple in here to fill in on those Thursdays. And then we have a Van Gogh Cypress a whole month from now, four weeks from now. So if it seems like two lives a week isn't enough, we can always add more. That's easy enough to do. Plus I really like doing the lives, so I don't mind it at all. I'd be happy to add them. Um, oh, so our email this week, you might have seen this. We did the, uh, the as seen on Facebook. <laughs> so the as seen on Facebook, those are, they're just the regular art kits to go. So it's not any different. Just if you, oh no. So word of the wise, don't put, uh, don't put your iPad case too close to wet paint. All right. So, uh, the art kits to go, I guess I'll have to do it this way. Same as, same as before, but the ones that are as seen on Facebook. So you'll have this option. And these are just the one-off art kits. So the art kits that you guys are ordering, the ones with the paints, the one with the paintings, um, those are nice and easy. Like we can just keep making those. We can just keep sketching canvases. We can just keep making those. It's fine. So we're not going to run out. But the as seen on Facebook, those are limited. Um, we only have like one or two of each. So we're doing it this way instead of just adding it to our regular options for the art kits. Um, because if too many of them get ordered, not going to work out. <laughs> so these are one off. Um, and we'll keep our Facebook page updated. And that's not the group. That's just the Creatively Uncorked main Facebook page. And we have a, a post at the top that's pinned. And that's got photos of the current kits. We'll keep updating that. So I'll keep deleting the ones that have been sold. And I'll keep adding new ones as we make them. So these are going to be the, the unique, the fun ones, um, like we just added, oh, speaking of boho week, we just added the boho wall hanging. So that one's in there now. We have um, watercolor, and this is kids watercolor, and so they're going to get a watercolor set, which yes, it's used because everything is. Um, so they're going to get the watercolor set, and then they're going to get 10 sheets of pre-sketched watercolor paper. So that's going to have 10 designs for them already ready to go, and then some wood signs. And we're just doing it this way so we don't have to mess with pricing changes. Everything's just flat $29, um, so it should be nice and easy. And you can also, oh, and some of these, it'll tell you if you should get new brushes or if it's used brushes only or no brushes, it should say that. Uh, otherwise, if you're doing a pickup in the studio and you're over 21, you can get a bottle of wine, possibly more. <laughs> Um, we can also deliver it, but we do need to check an ID at the door. So for, if you want to do a pickup and you want a bottle of wine, that is easy enough to do. All right. So how was your day? What's the best part of your day, guys? I mean, you could say this, but what else is the best part of your day? <laughs> And how are you guys doing on your, uh, your, <laughs> your isolation grocery hoarding? Because <laughs> I hope you're doing better than I am. I was going through the cupboard yesterday and saw that I pretty much I'm getting down to um, seven boxes of chai <laughs> and a case of ramen. <laughs> it's bleak. <laughs> Gonna have to go grocery shopping. Oh, outside time and walks. Oh, beautiful. It's so nice outside too. 
I've seen a lot of people outside riding bikes, um, running, lots of puppies. Yep, I've seen some families taking puppies for walks. Really nice. I actually got to go <laughs> Christmas put away. That is a wise use of your time. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you put it away do you actually like put it away away like do you like put it in boxes and put it someplace where you can't look at it anymore but we did we uh we used to put our christmas decorations away i'm talking about at the studio now at the creative land cork studio and after a while um because we have a lot of christmas stuff because christmas is like huge so uh that's that's our big season so we have a lot a lot of christmas stuff so after a while instead of putting it away we just have a Christmas forever room now. <laughs> so if you've been to the studio, it's the second bathroom down the hall to the left. Um, so it's the second bathroom and that is our Christmas forever room. It's just always decorated for Christmas. So we don't have to take our Christmas decorations down anymore. We just put them in the, in the Christmas forever room, <laughs> which is kind of handy. <laughs> well, you know, and if you say goodbye to Christmas, then you're also saying hello to summer. So there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Uh, we're all ready for summer. I, I have no doubt. And outside. I'm looking forward to more outside time. I hope that this, uh, it'll be okay to go for walks and we, nobody will be getting in trouble for going for walks or anything because, yep, definitely getting ready for outside time. I mean, we just got done with this huge winter. I, it wasn't as bad as some winters. I know, not as bad as last year, but... It's still spring now. It's in the 40s, so it's time to go outside. Okay. How brave am I? <laughs> Braver, what's that other word? It's definitely better to use a plate that you're not also using as a palette if you're going to use it to try to dry your background. Other news. Okay, so I was talking to some of our other Creatively Uncorked artists and Several now have agreed to start doing lives, so it won't just be me anymore. Um, and aside from the lives, like I said, we're trying really hard to get our uh, get our whole library online and to get everything live so that we can have it all ready to go for the art kits. So more and more of the art kits are going to have videos, recorded videos that go with them for instructions. So that'll be handy. Uh, and then if you want no art kit, but you do want the live videos, Maybe you don't live locally or whatever the case may be. Then the option we have is uh, Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com slash creatively uncorked, and this is where we'll, we'll be putting them. Um, just added two new ones again today, added four last week. So uh, we have all the acrylic paintings in one tier. We have the watercolor and the crafts in another tier. And we have the VIP, which is everything. So whatever you need, it's all going to be there. And on these, we'll have... The videos, you'll have the instructions separate from the video. Um, you'll have downloads, like if there's a traceable download, you'll have that. Um, and if there's any kind of a template aside from a traceable, then you'd have that there as well. And so that would be on the uh, the two middle tiers. That would be on the Creatively Acrylic, the Creatively Crafts, and the Creatively VIP. All three of those tiers will have everything you need to do a painting from home. Well, that works. I'm glad you're painting with us anyway. So this would be perfect for you, Brie. Am I saying that right? I know I ask you every time. <laughs> but yeah, the, and I've had a lot of requests and a lot of questions. So I, I know there are a lot of people in the same boat. They don't live close enough to pick up, uh, so they can't get the art kits. Shipping, you know, it's it'll take a couple of days to get there and it's an extra $16. I know we can fit three canvases into one box, so that is working out pretty well. Um, we are shipping stuff every day. So that is an option, but if you have your own supplies, 
Oh, good. Thanks. <laughs> I've been wondering. Thank you. Um, cause my name is Shanna and everyone always says it wrong and it kind of bugs me. So I don't want to, I don't want to call you the wrong name. So Brie. Um, so how are your backgrounds looking? They don't have to be completely dry for the next step. I'll wait till you guys let me know what you think of your backgrounds before we move on because I don't want to push you too fast on it. Is anybody getting any new vacations this week? Is it kind of the same as last week? Some people working from home? All the kids still off school. <laughs> yep. We're kind of the same as last week here. Still have one person home on layoff. And then there's, you know, me going to the studio and then also working from home. So yeah, that's working. We'll do what we got to do. All right. So on our background, we'll switch to the smallest brush that you have. So if it's this size, that's fine. If it's this size, either way, any small brush is gonna work. Aw, off due to surgery, that's not really a great reason for being off. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> well, are you are you working from home though? Are you so you're still working, Courtney? Even though City Hall is closed? Or are you just like not working? I suppose you kind of have to work, don't you? You guys are probably crazy busy right now. Getting all the new regulations out there and the changes out to everybody. With our little brush, we are going to take some. Oh, and I'll tell you exactly what we're gonna be painting here. Also, so we're gonna start background work, background to foreground. And the background is going to be these faded leaves that are way off in the distance. And before we get to those faded leaves, we'll be adding some of these little um, sticks, <laughs> stems. Uh, and the stems are going to be kind of a watery burnt umber. We want them to blend in with our background a little bit. So they're gonna be very faint, very light. So take your smallest brush, dunk that in some water. I have my brush kind of kind of loaded with water here, so I have kind of a lot. And then I'm going down to the edge of my brown, the burnt umber, and just mixing it in so it's nice and liquidy. taking a little tiny bit of white and just mixing it right into that watery brown. So this should be pretty thin, pretty light, and pretty watery. Not drippy. We don't want to work with drippy paint ever until we start working on uh, Cheshire Cat. <laughs> and that's a couple weeks away. All right, so once you have your paint mixed up, now I'm just going to twist through the paint and then lift off. So that's going to take off of the, ex the excess paint just leave a little bit of brown right on the brush and it will also point the bristles so that they're a little bit um, more finely pointed. So this is just a guide. We are not gonna make this exactly like this. We're just gonna take our brush, maybe I want a little more brown. Any color you have is gonna be fine. Okay, and I'm starting down near the vase and just kind of pull off and now if you twist, see now I have kind of a fat brush, so if you have a round brush, you can do the twist. Just kind of twist, and that'll make your branch pretty wiggly and a little more organic. And I'll show you, if you're using a filbert brush like this, you can just pick up a little paint on each side, flatten it out. Oh, maybe a little, a little more paint on there, let's see. So then just lead with the skinny edge. So either can work. Any kind of a brush you have for this is going to work just fine. With the filbert, it might feel like you have a little bit more control. At least it does for me. But also with this round, you can get a little bit more of an organic look. And that's when you kind of twist and pull. So if you're ever making like big wiggly tree branches or anything, this is a technique that can work for that. And I'm just kind of rolling the brush and then lifting off. 
So that'll get really organic looking and really wiggly and you have a lot less control over it. So if you kind of, if you kind of like paint really tight uh, and that gets to be too much, for, you know, too much, um, too much control, then this is one of those things that we do for, to help you make wiggly lines instead of straight perfect lines because organic shapes like this, not perfect. Clouds, not perfect. So in that case, we want the least amount of control. And if you're a control freak, <laughs> some of us are, right? And then we call it art therapy. It's fine. Moving on to our next steps, our background leaves. Again, either brush that you have is going to be fine. I'll keep working with the, the round here. Make sure you wipe any extra water off that might be on your handle. And I'll go with... I'll start out with these really faint background ones. So I've got a light blue, kind of mixing that into the brown a little, but the key is a lot of white. Now you can see why I'm mixing this on my plate instead of taking color right out of the pots. Okay, and then I'll just pick a spot where I wanna put my leaves and it's just kind of dab. So don't, don't, uh, Get too control -y over this. Just kind of dab. Whoop, way too dark. Much lighter. Okay. Oh, see? That's better. So just little dabs around the stem. Maybe I forgot to put a stem over here, but I want leaves there anyway. Nice little background flowers. Add a couple of stems worth of blue, like a light blue, or whatever color you're working with is fine. Maybe I want to start getting a little bit of green on here. So I'll just take a little green, put it on my plate. I'll just start with a little bit and I'll mix that green into my medium gray area. So if you don't have a medium gray area, just mix it with some white. Green and white is fine. Green and white and any other color is going to become a little more gray. And my gray area, this is kind of every single color, all four colors. So there, I've got just a nice little, nice little green there. It's still a nice faded color, still very muted, still very background. And flowers are fun. Flowers are one of those things that you can just paint as little or as much a detail as you want. And you can just keep dabbing color on all you want. They're kind of like trees that way. Like trees are super fun to paint. Flowers are really fun to paint. So I'm getting some really nice variation in the color. And go ahead and do this kind of throughout. Okay, change up the colors. You feel like changing the color. If you want it more green, more brown, more blue, you get to decide what colors you want. And these are all kind of like a background noise as far as detail goes. So as long as they aren't attracting too much attention, you're doing it perfectly. Maybe make some a little bit more brown. Bring some over here. And we can paint right over the top of these later, so don't even worry. I have this nice area right here that I don't want to stand out quite too much yet, so I'll just make that bluer so it matches a little better. How do I mix the green? So the green, all I did, I just took a little bit of green and I wanted this to be the faint muted green and I had this kind of muddy color in the middle. So I just mixed my green into that. If you're starting over with brand new fresh area of color, then you wanna take some green, some white, and that's going to give you a light green and that you can work with right there. Just that plain light green, that's all you need is some green and white. If you want it to mute it back even further, then you can mix in a little bit of brown or a little bit of blue because that's going to really bring out the grays and it's going to be less green and more gray. So if you want it green, keep a little more green in there. And I'll start mixing a little bit more green in there after this. 
I've got some nice blue and brown areas, so I think I'll start mixing a little bit more greens. You are welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for asking questions. Don't be afraid to ask. If you have a question on something, chances are someone else does too. They're just afraid to ask. So don't be afraid to ask questions. There, I brought in just a little bit of green and just a little bit of brown. How are you doing on these leaves? They're pretty fun, right? <laughs> you could kind of paint leaves for a really long time on these. And then I'll show you how to get some layers on your greens. So like on here, I started out with that muted blue and I just brought a little bit of white over it. If you wanted to do that in a few areas, you could. We will more toward the end because it's not something we really need now. Right now we're just making the muted background leaves. But if you just go kind of right over each one, just showing you the trick, that's all. And you can kind of give each one a little bit more shading, a little more depth, if that's what you're after. Same with the highlights, if you wanted to do highlights. Just a little touch of a highlight. Not going overboard on this. Still the background. Okay. I'll give you a few more minutes to paint your background leaves and then we'll start adding some background flowers. Just going back to the original again, you can see how muted they are in the background and then how bright and vibrant these center flowers are. So when we come back in for our next layer, we'll be doing some bright greens and these greens here show up really well because they're very dark and very light. We've got a lot of contrast in there. And these flowers in the center, we've got some really, really dark blues back there. And then we're gonna brighten it up with some really bright blues over the top. We'll bring in some dark, stronger dark colors just in a few areas, and that's really gonna give our flowers some shape. So that'll be fun. And I'll give it a few minutes. We're gonna let this just dry for just a few more minutes. So you get another break. <laughs> Don't be too brave like this. <laughs> Just kind of drawing my background a little bit uh, with the whole palette. So be careful for wet paint. And I think I tell you guys every time, but just in case I don't, just to let you know on how to clean your brushes. Um, it's a good idea to leave your brushes in the water while you're painting, but then as soon as you're done painting, go clean them. So to clean them, you just give them a good swish on the bottom of the cup first. And then when you go to the sink, soap, uh, clean them out really well with soap and then let them dry. Just lay them flat on a towel to dry and they'll be fine. If you have any kind of a brush soap, a good soap, um, like we use a, a brush soap at the studio. So then we clean them and then just take a little bit more of the brush soap. I'm trying not to drip this on my canvas and then just put it back in the bristles and just flatten them out to reshape them. And that'll keep your bristles in a nicer shape for a little bit longer. How many of you are painting along? I think I counted about six or seven, maybe more of you are and just didn't say anything. I think we should have quite a few painting with tonight. And I know every time there's been people that are, they'll watch it and then they'll come back the next day and actually do the painting. And that's great. Or maybe the timing isn't right for this and then you can come back and watch the video. We're gonna leave these videos in the Facebook group for a while. So if you wanna come back and watch any of these, then go right ahead. Invite your friends to the group and then you can do a, a live paint along with your friends. <laughs> Yep, the leaves are fun to add. The branches are fun to add. Anything really that's planty or organic, it just seems like they're just fun to paint. In case you're ever wondering why there are so many paintings of landscapes out there, <laughs> it's because they're so fun to do. 
it's one of those things that anything organic, you really can't paint it wrong. Uh, there are some people out there that paint like buildings and architecture and things that need to be perfect and, <laughs> and have straight lines. <laughs> I like straight lines like this. Even if it's not straight, you can still imagine that it's straight. It, it appears to be straight because your mind makes it straight. Buildings, it really doesn't work that way. So definitely I'm a bigger fan of the more organic shapes. Landscapes, trees, flowers. I don't really paint that many flowers, though. I really should. They're kind of fun. They're, they're a lot like trees in the way that they're fun to paint. Boho bulls. In case you don't have enough boho in your life. You can paint a boho bull and that's got flowers and a skull. And let's see. Well, I guess mine's looking pretty dry. How's is yours looking? It doesn't need to be completely dry, just mostly. We'll be coming back over this with some dark colors and with some light colors. And so we want the paint to stick. And the new paint won't really stick if the old paint is wet. It'll, it'll blend instead of sticking. Okay, let's try, let's try adding some darker darks. And I'm looking at this and it looks like uh, the darks were added behind the leaves or behind those flowers, but I think if we add those darker darks first, our flowers are still going to show up just fine. So we have a couple of different shades of dark. We have this green, we have this blue, and then we have this dark color, which is blue and brown mixed. So if you ever want a really dark color and you have blue and brown on your palette, those are the two colors that are gonna give you a really dark neutral color. And it's going to look better than black in a lot of circumstances. So I'll keep this nearby as a reference. And now I have my medium brush. If you have a medium brush, you can switch along, you can switch over. If you have a small brush, you can keep using that. Um, really doesn't matter. Just somewhere in the medium to small range is about all you're looking at for brushes here. Uh, these filbert brushes have a nice rounded edge, and so they're really good for organic painting. And same with the rounds. Of course, the rounds have a round edge, right? So those are good as well. So taking my filbert, and I'll take... Let's go with some greens first. So I'm just going right into the green. And do I want to try straight, straight green? I might. So I'm just going to go kind of right in the center area. I have a gap. And the trick to making leaves, see if I can get my hand out of the way so you can see, I'm pressing down with the edge of the brush, pressing down, pulling out, and then twisting up. And that's, that's one way to make a leaf. There, and then lifting off. And this isn't going to be the whole complete leaf, this is just a background of a leaf. I think I want my paint a little bit thicker. Hmm. So I'll mix a little blue little touch of blue in with my green. That'll make it a little darker, a little thicker. And now I'm just going kind of to the right side because I have a gap over there. So I'm just pressing down and lifting off. And that gives me kind of a pointed leaf. And just to go back to what these leaves look like again. So I'm just kind of adding a few leaves in there. You can see how they're just sort of a solid color in the back. And then in this case, they have other colors over them. So this has a darker color over, this has a lighter color over. So that's something that we can do too. So don't worry, we're just adding the background colors of these leaves. And I want my darker color showing, which is why I mixed a little bit of blue in with that. So I want this to be dark. And how many more? Excuse me, I think I can do, I think I can do this whole front area right here of these. So these have a really dark background a little bit more green with the light over the top. So I'll work on those next. So I'll start with the one at the bottom. Press down, lift up. And off to one side, press down, lift off. Other side, press down, lift off. Keep doing that until you have as many leaves as you want. Okay, 
Okay, I'll leave that spot at the top alone. I'll have a big flower there in just a little bit. Let's see if I take some. I'll do a few more darks first. So still with that dark green, maybe with a touch of blue in it, could be really dark. Got a few more leaves up over here I'll be adding. I think I have some other spots over. Oh, try not to cover it up there. So I'm just kind of doing some areas out, outside of where my flowers will be. I think that's looking okay for leaves. And you can just leaf this thing to death. I, I swear you can. <laughs> All right. So I'll just take that brush and wipe it off. I think I might want to start adding some highlight areas. So I'll switch back to my tiny brush. Or if you're just still, if you only have the filbert brush and that's one you're working with, that's perfect. You can just keep using that brush. Just use it, the end of it and just little dabs. So I'm taking my dark color, my blue, my little bit of green. So I have this dark blue, teeny touch of brown, small little touch of brown. So this is all three of my dark colors, mostly green, mostly blue. And where I'm going with this is I'm making these little dark leaves that come out in a few spots. So I've got dark green, dark green, dark green, and then this one is a little bit more blue over here. So I'll do these dark green ones because the color that I have here is mostly green. Mostly green, little blue, little brown. So let's see if I have a branch up here. And if you can still see your branch, go for it. If you can't see your branch, make it up. It's fine. I'm going to make one up. So I think this... going a little more brown in that color. I think green and brown are going to be the magic colors. Go back to which part, Lori? I can go back to any part that you want to see. Okay, and then I have my other dark leaves over here which are mostly blue so I'll give that a try and if you oh sorry Lori I know I paint kind of fast I'll stop and take a break The good news is at the end of this video, it'll be saved in the group and you can go back and rewatch it anytime, as many times as you want. Okay, but we should all have most of our background leaves in, I would think. I'll show you again how to get these dark leaves. I still have another area of dark leaves that I'll be adding in over here. And there is really no vase of flowers that needs this many flowers. So if you're not painting this many, it's okay. You don't need to have this many. These are your flowers that you can paint that way you want. Um, and once you kind of learn how to make the different flowers, which, and these aren't really that detailed. So these are kind of like impressions of flowers. So once you get the, uh, the couple of brush strokes that makes up all of these flowers, you can just kind of go back and do anything that you want with them. We've, we've basically learned only two different brush strokes at this point, I think. 
Um, all of this is made up of two different brush strokes. Aside from the stem, which, you know, you, do, you can either do the little wiggle or you can just use the edge of your brush just to paint on a line, whichever way you want to do it. So that's just your brush strokes that you need for your stems. And then for the leaves, the leaves, you can either take your small brush and just do dab, 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 dab. That's most of what we've done so far is just little dabs. And you're just kind of following the stem. You keep your brush at the same angle pointed toward the stem. So as long as your handle is pointed toward the stem, your leaves are going to turn out facing the right direction. So this one, we just kind of have it, all the leaves pointed away. And just dab, 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 dab. So just like that, that's the brush stroke for those. Uh, when we get up into these little tiny leaves, it's the exact same thing, but we're just using less paint and just less of the brush. So a light touch on the canvas with the brush leaves a little dot. Heavy pressing with the brush leaves a big dot. So then we have just light dots. So this is light dabs again, turning the handle. So the handle is always facing your stem and that'll help your leaves face the right direction. And as far as color mixing on this, color mixing is really easy because we're using a very limited palette. We have four colors, that's it, that's all. Any of these colors that you wanna mix in anywhere that you wanna put them is going to work out just fine. Um, when you're working with a limited palette like this, it's your lights and your darks that matter more, far more than your color. Because anything that you put in this area, anything is, it's going to read as a leaf or a flower or a stem. It doesn't matter what color it is. It's going to look like it's right. So that's a nice thing about that. Background, that's just a background. So no worries there. On the, the, uh, the vase, the only things that we even were concerned with is that we have a shadow area and a highlight area. And you can't really change those once you start putting the leaves on. So that's something that you just kind of have to put down and um, and kind of either do it right the first time or just don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, it's just the vase. The vase is not the star of the show. We haven't gotten to the star of the show yet. So far, these are all just supporting characters. The star of the show is going to be our little grouping of the bright blue flowers right in the center. So these are the ones that we're going to want to make and get all of the attention. So all of this is fun to paint and not too stressful. When we get to here, again, it's going to be not too stressful. The way that we make it be the star of the show is with contrast. So the contrast being the lights and the, against the darks. That's why we're doing our really, really dark leaves and our really dark areas now. And then when we come back with our flowers, then we'll make our flowers really bright, really blue. So these are going to be a very pure, bright blue compared to our dull mixed background colors. So these are all a gray, dull color. And that's really going to help our 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 main flowers stand out, our main characters. So all of this, don't worry. <laughs> you're just adding some leaves, you're adding some just background details, and this is all just creating the shape and texture of your canvas and kind of giving a place for your important flowers to sit. So when you're ready, oh, and the next technique, the only other technique that I showed so far is the uh, the leaves. And the leaves, this is probably the trickiest technique of all, and it won't get any more difficult than this. Uh, so you take any color, and let's see how brave I am. Oh, okay. So all I'm doing is kind of using the edge of the brush and pressing down and then lifting off. So pressing down, lifting off. And that kind of gets that pointy leaf shape. And you can practice this as much as you want. And you can see how when you start to run out of paint, it doesn't work quite as well. So when it starts to do that, you just reload with paint. Push down, lift off. Push down, lift off. And this leaf technique works better with less water. So don't add water to your paint really at this point. Just press down and lift off. So wherever you want your leaves to go. Aside from that, I'll just take a little bit of dark color here again. So there's your stem. And then for the little dab leaves, 
And see, I'm just rotating it each time just to, I don't want to set this down because I think it's going <laughs> to end up on my canvas there, but so I'm just pressing it down and I keep changing, rotating the brush so that the handle is uh, pointing toward that stem. So just rotating and alternating all the way down that stem. I've got a little bit of color variation in here just because of the multi multiple colors that are on my brush. Okay. All right, just clean that brush out a little bit. Clean this brush out a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I so I have this one more dark area over there. That's what I was going to do. And you can see how any of these dark colors kind of doesn't really matter what color they are as long as they're dark. So I'll just take some green, blue, heck, even some brown. And that one just kind of goes right along this one, sort of. Just some little dabs. And just press down. Press down, lift off. And that'll read as a leaf. So this one's a little more green, this one's a little more blue, doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's see. I know we have some highlights and things we can do in here. Hmm. Or should we go ahead and add the flowers? Okay, you guys vote. Do you want to add the flowers or do you want to add the highlights and shadows? I know we're on at least a 30 second delay here. On the branches. Um, did I answer your question there, Lori? Because um, you're saying back up to the branches. And I, were you asking about the leaves that were going on the branches or backing up to do more branches? <laughs> flowers? Well, that's two vote for, votes for flowers. Okay, we'll do a couple of flowers. Okay, good, Lori. Okay, so the flowers that I wanna do now, again, supporting characters, these are gonna be kind of the background ones. So we have these dark muted flowers back there, but the thing that we're learning with these background flowers is the technique. And the same technique will be used up here, but we get to put them back here so they're just practice. So we'll do some background flowers, a few other flowers, and the only difference between these flowers and those flowers, just a little bit of a variation in color. Use your smallest brush, um, either the filbert or the small round, doesn't matter. Either of them are gonna work just fine. So I'll start out with these dark muted colors. So I wanna take some of this blue. And again, we're just kind of mixing a big hodgepodge of colors here. Don't worry about it. Uh, a little bit of blue. I took a little bit of brown. Brown is going to mute that blue quite a bit. And see, that's getting to be, it's almost a denim color. Okay, and just a touch of white. Okay, so that's pretty all right. So now, kind of, I've lost all my branches here. It's up to you if you want to add new branches or if you just want to pretend you have branches. Um, I kind of just sort of make things up often and pretend to have branches. But if you really, really, really want to have branches, you can just add some in there somewhere. So I'll just kind of try to lightly, lightly drag a branch. So I'll call that a branch. All right, so now my flowers. Let's see if I can show you the flower technique without making a mess. <laughs> so what I'm doing is, so I'm that's gonna be the center of my flower. It's a tiny dot because I don't really want a, a dot. So I'm aiming for the center, wherever I go, 
So starting outside of it, pointing toward the center, pressing down, lifting off. And these are going to be, if you want four petals or five petals, totally up to you. Press down, aim for the center, and lift off. So that would be your four petal. So if that's my center, and I want five petals, just make room for five petals. We don't want to make every single one of them star-shaped. Get a little bit more paint here. Um, we, we can make them twisted and kind of weird because flowers aren't always going to be facing us. They're going to be facing whatever they want to face. So if you make some big flowery things there, now you have a flower that's facing another direction. Get a little bit more paint. Okay, so, so don't try to make these perfect. Maybe you have three big leaves over here. And notice how often I'm picking up paint. Maybe some big over there. And they just have some little weird random shapes. It's fine. Every flower can be different. So that's what we're doing is starting in the outside, aiming for the center. We'll mix up a little bit more paint here. Have my blue, my brown, my white, kind of that uh, dirty denim color. And then that's where I put my stem. So I'll kind of aim for that. Kind of keep my flowers near it. And if you're using the filbert, just use the side of your brush. Filberts work really well for flowers. They're just probably the best flower brush. And maybe I want some a little bit darker. So I'm just taking a little bit more blue here into my mix. And I'll make some a little bit smaller and bluer. So I'm just adding a little bit of variation. Oh, that one got really star-shaped, didn't it? Just put another little tiny one out in the end. And as I'm picking up paint with my round, I'm just twisting the brush and pulling it through the paint so that it kind of loads up the paint on the end and also makes a point on that brush. So let's see, I'll make a little, another little dark flower over here. Give it a friend. <laughs> Yeah, and then add some color variation when you're ready. So if you've got a couple of um, blue flowers, throw in a different color, throw in some green, throw in some more brown, throw in some more white. So make it, give it some variation, give it some life. There, and I've got a little bit of green. So that's a nice dark color. Just adding a touch of water this time because my paint's starting to dry out. At this point, we've been working for about an hour with our paints, so they do, acrylic paint does dry quickly. So as it starts to dry out, you might want to just add a touch of water and mix it into your paint so that it continues to flow smoothly as you're working. And I've kind of gone off the res here. No rhyme or reason. I'm just putting flowers wherever I want them. There. So there are some nice little flowers. Take some bright coloring here. I'm going to put a big flower off over here. I think if I go up here, I might get sidetracked in the background flowers again. So you go right ahead and make as many flowers as you want, wherever you want them. And don't forget, these are still just the background flowers. We'll get to the main event here in just a little bit. Just doing a couple more little leaves down over here. And the leaves, the flowers. Take as much time on it as you want. Uh, eventually, you know, after you do this a few times, you'll, you'll get a little bit faster. Um, and they're still going to be fun. So I'll kind of have like this little branch over here some light little dabs. So if you're just filling in background areas, just some light little flowers are going to be the perfect thing. 
maybe even lighter than that. So what do you guys think of working with a limited palette? I know we'll have some coming up here pretty soon that are mostly black and white. I think it's really helpful to work on a limited palette, especially if you're um, trying to build your painting skills. Working with a limited palette will take away all that question about the colors and how to mix. It, you'll just focus on light, dark, value, composition, the brush strokes, the getting things to look how, you, how they should look. Um, so it really, it takes away some of that guesswork. It takes away some of the challenge and it just kind of, it's nice to bring things to a, a simple point. If I can say it that way, kind of a more simple point. Painting black and white is a lot more simple, I think. And it's a very powerful, you can get really lights, really darks. And when you're dealing with colors, you can sometimes have a tendency to focus too much on the color instead of the lights and darks and, um, putting things where they should go. Okay, so at this point, I think I wanna start doing some highlights and some shadows on my green leaves. So I've got a lot of blue here, not a lot of green. So I'm just going back and looking at the original for a second. I've got these highlights that I wanna add down here, some highlights over here. And then while I'm working with that light green, I have a few more details that I can add up in there just to kind of bring the green throughout the whole painting. So just to give my brush a little rinse. So my green, I'll take out a little bit more green onto my plate. And mixing it with white. So now I've got a light green. This is just green and just white. So it's a pretty pure color, just like green. And now this is going to appear to be really powerful when we add this to the, the dark leaves down here because you've got the dark against the light. And I'm just kind of going right around a little bit of the edge. Maybe a touch more green in that. Okay, so a little green, there we are. So now our, now our leaves are really coming to life. And we don't need to paint the whole thing. We're just giving it a little hint of color. Just a pop of a highlight. Just a quick little brush stroke on each one. A few more places we can do that. We've got our leaves coming down here right on the side. So I can and whether you want to make it a highlight of this leaf or if you want to make it its own leaf, you can do either. I'm kind of ignoring branches <laughs> and just kind of painting leaves where I think leaves should go. Just a little bit of green there. So now you can just comparing this area now to the rest of the painting. This is all a very muted color up here and then we've got this really bright pop of green so i just want to carry some of that green through to a few more areas like up in the top around the edges so maybe i'll just take a little bit over here and just add some highlights to those leaves not going overboard just a few little highlights make up a new leaf or you feel like making up a new leaf okay that's enough green on that side i think So I'll take a little bit of green up toward the top too. Still a light green, still want it to be pretty light, just white, just green. Uh, and a cat hair. <laughs> yeah, just a little, not too much. A little bit over here. I think I'm just about done adding green. I just want that little pop of color and green is our color. It's a little bit over here. Not too much. There. 
Okay, so I'll let that be. That'll be my background. And I think that's, we're set up pretty good for adding our main flowers. So I'll go ahead and clean the brush. I'll let you catch up for a few minutes. So if you're still adding your flowers, adding your details, go right ahead. Then when we come back, we've already practiced our flower shapes. And that is exactly the technique we're going to do when we add our main flowers. There's only a few of them to add. We have our really dark darks that we're going to add, and then we have our really bright brights. So I don't really have a whole lot of clean spot left in my palette, but I'll figure out where I can get a nice bright blue. And we'll have some nice bright flowers. Well, this is officially the longest live we've done so far, you guys. Thanks for hanging in there. And my cat hasn't jumped up on the table once. <laughs> I wonder where she is. She must be sleeping. out the brushes okay I think I want to go with the filbert brush when we come back so if you have a filbert brush that's what I'll be using or if you have a small brush that'll work just fine filbert or small brush All right, so how are you guys doing on your leaves? Let me know when you're ready to move ahead with the flowers. And I know we're on a pretty good delay, but you guys can just go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to start planning for my flowers. I have a big light blue flower right there. I'll have a little light blue flower right there. I'll put a pretty dark flower right there. A nice big bright flower. I'm just kind of talking it out. <laughs> and you might want yours in the same place. You might want to change the spot of your flowers a little bit. I'm going to... Start with a medium blue, and then I'll push some of them darker and some of them brighter. But all of them are going to be blue. Tiny little bit of white on the brush, going up into the blue paint. And just mixing it a little bit right there on the plate to get my medium blue. This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous blue. Phthalo blue, in case you are wondering. So I'll start with my big flower right here, and that's got a big. So same technique, I'm just using two brush strokes at a time because I want that to be a really, really big flower. So here's my center that I'm aiming for. And if it helps to rotate, rotate. The only thing you have to do with flowers is aim for the center. Wherever you start with your petals, however you make them, Aim for the center. Let's see, I'll do another one right up over here. Not quite as big this time. Okay. So they're all, they're, it's looking a little bit bland right now. Trust me, we're going to be okay. <laughs> we're going to end up with some pretty powerful, beautiful flowers. And this one maybe is a little bit more crooked. And these I'm just making four petals, just keeping it nice and simple. And we'll put a few right over here. Okay. 
think I'll put another one over here. I'll go with a little bit brighter already. And I think we might have to go back in and darken up some of our dark areas behind those bright flowers. Put another one way off over here. That one ended up being five petals. All right, and then while those are drying out a little, I'll do my big chain of flowers, maybe it is. So I want that to be light, so I'm gonna take a medium light, just adding more white to my blue there, and that'll come right down this way. So I'll make my first flower. Just four little dots, named from the center. So this is my kind of imaginary little uh, stem there. I have another flower right there. And these are just blobs. These aren't real flowers. We're not paying too much attention to them. We're just putting them there. Just a little bit. There. Just a couple of dots with the brush. Not, not too, uh, don't be too concerned about the final look on that one. Um, again, it's not the star of our show. Okay, so while we've got some of that in there, And you go on ahead and put extra flowers wherever you feel like you need them. There. I'm going to stop. Because <laughs> I want to get back to these. So you can see kind of wherever these flowers are, we want those to be bright and we want those to be powerful. So anything behind those flowers needs to be dark. And while our blue on the flower is drying a little bit, I'll just rinse my brush. It's not completely clean. It's just mostly rinsed. And then I'll take a little brown, a little blue. This is my dark, dark color. Okay, I'll just kind of come up right around those, those flowers. And all I'm doing is just darkening the background. So if you make it leaf-shaped in some sense, great. If not, at least it's a dark color, right? Which is the ultimate goal. We want that to be dark so that our bright flowers get the attention. Maybe making a little more green. Okay. Maybe making a little more. Some kind of blobs of blue that might be blue flowers that are just hiding back there. That don't really have a defined shape. They're just dark flowers that haven't bloomed yet. Now I've got my blues, I've got my flowers in place, and I've got my darks. So I'll give you a few minutes to catch up on your flowers and your darks. I know I painted that pretty quickly, so <laughs> I'll give you a few minutes. Oh, well, looks like we've got a few more people back. So I know a few of you have done multiple paint-alongs. What's your favorite painting so far? I know I have my favorites. All of them. <laughs> okay, so I'm... I have my dark darks and I have my blues. I kind of want to reshape my blues with a really, really bright color. So same brush. And remember those darks, you're just putting them there. They aren't there to get attention. You just put them there so they can attract attention for your bright blue flowers. So now on my petals, I have this light blue and I'm just going to press that down right onto the petal. So you're starting at the end of the petal and then aiming for the center of the flower.
If you don't touch the center, don't worry. If you aren't all the way to the edge, don't worry about that either. These colors have, a, or these flowers have a lot of variation. This one, yeah. Flowers are fun, right, Jennifer? I like flowers because they're forgiving. If you paint a fl any, any kind of a colorful blob, right, and it's in a vase, for example, it looks like a flower. Very forgiving. And the more detailed you want to get with them, the more t detailed you can get. You can go from barely making a flower shape and getting away with it to uh, getting making extremely detailed flowers. And if you want to, we can do even more detailed flowers as we go along. We have a Georgia O'Keeffe, red poppy, I believe it's called, orange poppy maybe. Anyway, it's, uh, it's gorgeous and very bright, very vibrant, a little more challenging. It's one of the more detailed flowers. Um, and that one would be probably not pre-sketch. That one would probably walk you through how to, well, let me think about that actually. We might, we might pre-sketch it because that one would be pretty challenging, but we can draw it because every time I've taught it in the studio, we've started out drawing it, not pre-sketching it. So I'm sure I could talk you through it. If you wanted to do that one, the O'Keefe poppy, we could definitely do that one, which is a much more, much more detailed flower. And George O'Keefe, what beautiful flowers she makes. So that's not looking too bad. I think I want to punch up those edges. So I'm just wiping off the paint, going into the white, and just boom. Just brighten up that flower. I just want that flower to get all the attention. That's my that's my main character right there. There, just punch it up with some brights. Bright whites against those dark darks. See, look at that. When you get that contrast in there. Not going over all of it, just some punching up some highlights in a few spots. Yeah, like that. So then once we have some highlights, so then our highlights, once they're in there, then we just have some dark areas. We'll put the centers of the flowers in there and that's just the dark color again, the brown and blue. Um, so we'll just add those dots in there. So we'll have that really dark color against those really bright whites and blues. And that's just gonna, that's just gonna make our flowers get all the attention. So I'll, can, we can do it two ways. We can switch to our small brush again. Just do a little dot in the center. There, I'm making a nice messy dot in the center. <laughs> this one, you can't really see the center. Yeah, you can right there. There it is. I will put that center where I want that center. There. Not making perfect circles here. This is organic. So now we've got some attention getting flowers. So there, I'll just make some little darks right around there. Just make sure it's dark enough nearby that these are getting the right amount of attention. We want those to show. And another way that the, we're getting these flowers to show is we're pointing at them. All of our branches are pointing toward the center. It's all pointing toward our main characters there. Everything, all these supporting characters that's what they're there for. So just to make sure I get a little bit more focus. So what I'm doing just to focus that area, just punching up the contrast right in the center. So more bright brights against the dark darks. And up here where I have some highlights, I'm just uh, pointing my highlights toward the center. So it doesn't really matter if these are highlights that make sense. 
because they make sense in the grand scheme of things. So how's that for <laughs> what sounds like an entirely made up answer, but for saying I'm putting my leaves wherever I want them. I'm putting them where I want them, but I actually have a plan. So, and this is my plan. My plan is to point at my main characters. There. So that helps a lot, I think. So you can just keep right on ahead and adding your details. I know this is just really one of those paintings where you can just keep right on going. And a lot of times I'll say, you know, stop painting <laughs> when you before you overwork it, but flowers and trees are almost an exception. They're just too fun to stop painting. There. Okay, so now I think I've got a nice, nice impact area right there in the center. So you can just keep right on going with that. I'll see if I can find that old Keith Poppy for you and show you what that looks like. I'm pretty sure that one's in our three hour library. We haven't done it in a while, but it's a fun one. <laughs> well, if I find it, I'll post it. And in the meantime, if you have any requests for any upcoming paintings, let me know. We are working really hard to get our entire library in video format so that when you um, wanted to do it, an art kit, then you're going to have a video for it. Uh, but that's going to take some time. Even with the help of the other Creatively Uncorked artists, it's still going to take some time. Video just plain takes a long time. So if you wanted to let us know which ones you wanted to paint first, we'll put it up higher on the priority list. Um, otherwise, I am more than happy to just keep doing these lives. Um, I like doing the lives. It's not quite the same as the studio. In the studio, I get to walk around and see how everybody's doing. If I'm painting too fast, it's really easy for me to see. Uh, if I'm painting too fast live, then I just have to wait for you guys to tell me because I can't always see what you're doing. So just let me know. Yeah, I can't find that painting right now. I'll get it. I'll post it for you. So in case you wanted to see the O'Keefe Poppy, if you want to do more detailed flowers, and let me know what you want to paint. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. I'm Shanna Kramer. This is Creatively Uncorked, and this has been The Blue Flowers Live. Uh, again, you can always get an art kit to go, which is anything on our Creatively Uncorked page, art kits to go. And you can just order one, take it home, paint it, or you can always join us for these lives. Please do join us for the lives <laughs> because they're my favorites. I like doing the lives. Uh, I, I mean, recorded videos are great too, but I'm just talking to a camera. At least this way I'm talking to you guys. And if you do want just the recorded videos, you can always check us out on patreon.com slash creatively uncorked. We have a few different levels depending on what kind of paintings you want to see or if you want to see crafts. Uh, I'll start doing some watercolor paintings pretty soon on these lives because I've gotten uh, several requests for that. And I do want to start doing some watercolor again. It's been, it's been probably a couple of weeks now. So I'll want, I do want to get back to it. Um, so thank all of you and please do post your paintings. I can't wait to see what you painted. I bet all of you have amazing flowers. I will. <laughs> well, let me let me see what you got, Jennifer. If you uh, if you have any specific questions, if you want us to do more flowers, because flowers are super fun, I'd be more than happy to do more flowers. Right now, we are only doing two lives a week, and if we wanted to add a third live, we can add a third live. <laughs> but show me your flowers, Jennifer, and if I can give you any tips or any hints, I'd be happy to. That's something we would do in the studio, so I will help you out as much live as I possibly can. And if you had any specific questions and you wanted to send a message directly to me, that's fine. You can just send a message directly to the Creatively Uncorked page. That's fine. Um, and yeah, and I'll help you out as much as I can. So thank you all for joining. I'm so glad you could be here. And I will talk to you maybe on Thursday. All right. Have a good night.